Yes, I can. <laughs> so for today, we are going to cover IoT. Okay. Okay. Uh, IoT is your Internet of Things. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So, what does IoT constitutes of? So all the devices. Uh, that are nowadays being connected to the internet. Uh -huh. All of these devices are covered under the ambit of IoT devices. Uh -huh. Nowadays, you can see uh, washing machines getting smart washing machines. Yeah. Uh, refrigerators being converted to smart refrigerators. Yeah. Okay. Your, I would say, lightning in the house. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, music systems, your TV, smart TV, yeah, your uh, lights, bulbs are now smart converting into smart bulbs. Yeah. So, uh, as now you can understand that if once uh, as everything is now moving towards the internet, so uh -huh. uh, this is going to lead to an increase in the uh, possibility of these devices getting or being exploited by others as well correct being explo exploited remotely okay. so have you seen that this show mr robot mm, yeah one of them but not much okay so let me see if i can find a clipping of it uh, uh -huh. time to refer to Robot. I don't know if it was season one. Okay, we'll leave it then. I'm not oh. able to find it. So Yeah, coming back. What to is that? Uh, lawyer scene, huh? Yeah, there was a lawyer scene where uh, uh, there was a lawyer who uh, she was a, a lady who bought in who bought a new house and who just uh, uh, moved into that house and his house was full. Uh, everything there was connected to the internet. Okay. Mm -hmm the the electricity the lightning system the cameras the tvs the curtains the ac the, the room control uh, the room con temperature control system everything was connected to the internet and the hackers were managed to uh, compromise all those devices okay and they just scared the shit out of that lady so there was a scene well anyways so coming back to our uh, iot module so we are going to cover the iot architecture okay so there's a five layer architecture in iot devices as well okay just like uh, in networking we have got those i would say certain OSI. communication yeah osi and tcp models okay in mobile also there is mobile platform architectures okay so in iot we have got IoT architecture. So this IoT architecture consists of five layers. Okay. The first one starting from the top is the application layer. Okay. Then comes your middleware layer. So <clears throat> basically your application layer is responsible uh, for, so you can consider application layer as the layer by at which you, uh, the application interacts with the end user okay uh, the layer where user interface is being implemented and where the user is able to uh, manage or control the device iot device through the interface so that thing is being implemented on the application layer itself okay so that's your application layer and then comes your middleware layer okay. so middleware layer is just below the application layer 
it is responsible for device management as well as the information management okay and then comes your internet layer it's uh, basically as the name suggests it's for the uh, end to end connectivity okay the endpoint connectivity to the internet okay. that's uh, being implemented by the internet layer <coughs> then comes your access gateway layer okay so your access gateway layer is responsible for protocol translation and messaging okay <coughs> then comes your edge technology layer so your edge technology layer covers all the iot uh, capable devices so now we are going to discuss some iot technologies and some protocols <coughs> so majorly all these technologies are divided into broadly three things okay the wired communications aspect the wireless communications and the operating system okay so in wired communications uh, the technologies that are in use is your e the ethernet cable okay uh -huh. devices can be connected to the ethernet cable the other variants for connecting end to end devices using oh, wired medium yeah it's there's a moca cable it's your multimedia over coax alliance cable okay and then there is your power line communication yeah plc okay these are like your uh, you can say those um, heavy lines okay uh, you can say that goes around goes between the towers <laughs> so then comes your wireless communications okay in wireless communications it is further divided into three parts okay uh, a short range a medium range and a long range <coughs> wireless communications so in short range communications as you would already be aware of this ble that's your bluetooth mm -hmm. low energy okay. yeah, yeah. And then wi-fi you would already be aware of okay often misrecognized as wireless fidelity <coughs> Instead, it is just a IEEE 802.11x standard. Yeah. Okay. Then comes your light fidelity. So, what is light fidelity? I don't know if you have uh, ever experienced this kind of thing or not. No. Have you ever experienced life. this Li-Fi? Life. No, Li-Fi. Li 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 so actually i have also not experienced this kind of thing but okay there's there's such kind of technology that exists out there okay, where that okay. communication that it can be uh, <coughs> exchanged through the medium of light ah okay okay this is uh, this is for uh, you know this is mostly you can say sort of uh, similar to wire similar to fiber you know like how the light uh, trans because i'm just checking it's a wireless communication technology we utilize light to transmit data and position between devices oh, but it is something different light yeah. okay So here I have some reference images that I have found from the Google. Okay. Here it is that image cool. So yeah so it basically utilizes the <coughs> the light spectrum to uh, the data transfer okay although i have not uh, actually seen such kind of things in my real life and i have no luck with these things 
But okay. So this is some kind of a technology that exists out there. And mm. some kind of a <clears throat> next generation thing. Yeah. So in 2016, it was reported that Li-Fi was being tested in Dubai by UAE-based telecommunication providers. Well, we'll see how things turn out for us. Yeah. So, then there is something called NFC. That's your NFC near field. Near field communication. Yeah, near field RFID. RFID is also known. Yeah, radio frequency identification. So your yeah. NFC are generally implemented or at those metro token gates yeah. so, and uh, a lot of smartphones are also capable of nfc yeah your rfid are implemented in your car remote controls okay. yeah uh, your specific radio frequency is emitted and received by your car key Okay, to lock and unlock your car from a nearby distance. Yeah. So then comes your medium ranged uh, wireless communications. So we have got uh, LTE. Okay. And uh -huh. we have got uh, HA low. Uh -huh. Then comes your long ranged wireless communications. So these are like your uh -huh. cellular networks. And okay. VSAT, <clears throat> that's your very small aperture terminal. And then comes your low cellular power band. Yeah. LP band. That's your low power wide area networking. Yeah. Okay. Then we have got uh, uh, dedicated OS uh, relevant to the IoTs only. So here I have listed certain OS that are that have been developed uh, with IoT in mind. So Riot OS, maybe you would have heard of it. It's like yeah. it's a very well known OS dedicated for IoT platforms only, IoT devices only. Okay, let me see if I can add something relevant to it. Uh, Riot OS. Yeah. Small operating system for network memory constraints. A friendly OS for IoT. Okay, so so you can see here that this OS is uh, your free and open source. Okay, and I believe your Arduino's these Arduino's are also implemented using. Your Riot OS. So then comes your. So here I have listed uh, more IoT operating systems. So we have got ARM Embed OS. Uh, then comes your Real Sense OS X. Okay. And then there is uh, your Ubuntu Core. It's uh -huh. called a dedicated IoT OS. Okay. Then there is your Integrity RT OS. These are these were some of your uh, dedicated IoT specific operating systems. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> then comes your IoT communication model. Okay. What are the IoT based communication models out there? So majorly there are four IoT based uh, communication models. Okay. So the first one is your device to device mod model. Okay. As the name suggests. Uh, so your device to device model simply means that okay, this is your. Uh, sorry to interrupt, just one minute. Huh? Yeah.
Yeah, please continue. Yeah, so I was telling you about certain models in IoT. Mm -hmm. So they come from the device to device model. Okay. Device to device model. Uh, your, you can say that your devices are connected directly to each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. so let's say that this is your mobile phone. Okay. Which is connected. Uh, okay, directly directly to your printer. Okay. So, when two devices are directly connected to each other, it is going to be considered as a device to device model. Okay. Device to mm -hmm. device. So, another example for this is okay, there's a Bluetooth headphones. Okay. Or you can say your smart. What is it? Smartwatch. Smartwatch, yeah. Bluetooth headphones. Smartwatch. Wireless charger for mobile. Yeah, right. Whatever devices which are directly connected to each other are going to be uh, covered under the device to device mo model. Okay, mm -hmm. it's the uh, most basic model uh, in which two devices uh, connect to each other directly and communicate to each other directly without any kind of interference from any third mm -hmm. device okay so here i have mentioned certain examples as well so i've already mentioned them to you your smartwatch yeah. your smart tv directly being connected your printers your Bluetooth devices. Okay. So then another model is your device to cloud model. Mm -hmm. okay. So then what happens in device to cloud model is let's say your device is going to be your IoT device is going to be connected to an uh, application server. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if your device is being connected to an application server. So it's going to be considered under the device to cloud model. model. Okay. Uh -huh. So in here you can say that you can consider it uh, like your security sensors or systems uh, in your home. Okay. Multiple sensors like camera, like your motion detector sensors, like your temperature uh -huh. sensors, all of them being connected to the cloud or the application servers and being managed. Uh, at at those through those application servers only. Yeah. Okay. Then comes your device to gateway model. Okay. So, so before that, let me give you the reference of an image for device to cloud. So here is. Uh, a representation for device to cloud model mm -hmm. okay can you see the image yeah okay now let's proceed to the device to gateway communication model so what okay. in this model, the changes in this model is the gateway is coming yeah your devices are not directly connected to the application server mm -hmm. instead all your devices are going to be connected to a gateway and that gateway is going to be correct, further connected to the application server. So what happens in this is that you get a centralized point 
to manage and control all these devices to manage the traffic itself okay mm-hmm. if you want to allow or disallow or monitor what kind of protocols are being in use okay everything mm-hmm. can be managed at the <coughs> gateway point okay much more mm-hmm. efficiently as compared to managing the, them at the application server point yeah then comes your back end data sharing model okay. <coughs> so what happens in back end data sharing model that it's the most advanced uh, model out of them all mm-hmm. so i have an image for that as well <coughs> so these are generally <coughs> implemented by the enterprises okay where yeah your one application server not no single application server is in use instead mm-hmm. a whole nexus of application servers work behind the scenes mm-hmm. okay. so this is your backend data sharing model mm-hmm. so this model is, is uh, similar uh, to because nowadays there is a concept of uh, <coughs> data like you know the recording of uh, cameras directly to the cloud so what they do is the camera itself has a built in functionality to connect to the portal which is the application and uh, that application is hosted somewhere on the internet and that they, they like it will be hosted on one of the data center and they will have a replica of multiple data centers so it will have multiple redundancy so your your data or your store or your recording is on multiple place at any given point of time you can access it from anywhere through that application right so this was the example for your back end data model <laughs> <coughs> then comes your iot attacks and challenges mm-hmm. okay. so just like uh, your ovas top 10 list of web vulnerabilities we have got a top 10 list uh, of uh, iot vulnerabilities as well okay. mm-hmm. so i have mentioned the link for it here the top 10 vulnerabilities so the latest list is uh, from 2018 okay here you can see that we can guessable or hard coded passwords okay in secure network services what all protocols are being used okay if obsolete protocols are going to be used it's going to be covered here okay so some specific vulnerabilities i have mentioned here okay mm-hmm. or some challenges so iot brings the mobility and it's it brings the ease but along with it brings the challenges as well so uh, it lacks the security majorly okay. yeah. the interface for iot devices uh, in most of the cases it itself in itself it is vulnerable yeah then comes your that some kind of physical security risk can be there so after that you can say that uh, not much of uh, support is going to be provided to you by the vendor itself okay mm-hmm. then it is very difficult to upgrade or update the firmware itself okay the the os that is being uh, utilized on that iot device is going to be difficult to upgrade that that okay. 
so I don't remember what kind of video I mentioned here. Let's see. Are you tired of the media spinning the truth and pushing false narratives? Well, take a look at this. Over the last three years, while the establishment media was pushing false narratives and uncorroborated evidence, the ring security cameras were hacked. Okay, so I mentioned here the uh, news, the latest, uh, I would say, government topic in cyber security. Okay, so are you aware of this Amazon Ring application and hardware? Amazon Ring, right? Uh, Amazon Ring. Okay. This is uh, your doorbell, doorbell provided by Amazon, mm -hmm. is uh, controlled remotely. Ah, okay, the ring, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it so, can be controlled remotely, yeah. Yeah, right. So now it has again posed a major threat to this security. Mm -hmm. This, this also device is being hacked, mm -hmm. so, and whole lot of Chaos in security industry is leaving its customers vulnerable to and harassment. Corporations blame their customers in Pigeon Box Rico. Ring said they do not comment on ongoing litigation, but quote, it is important to note that there is no evidence that Ring systems or network will compromise. No, we reached out to Ring for a statement as well. They have not. Well, anyway, so I have mentioned this uh, video for your mm -hmm. reference, this news snippet. Okay, in my notes as well. Okay. What else do we have here? So, what are the attack areas in <coughs> IoT? Attack areas: device memory, connection, access control, firmware, private set, resetting, failing, secure storage, and. Uh, so, uh, the <coughs> access control itself is a incident attack surface. Okay. Uh, and yeah. you have different credentials or you, uh, the device memory containing the credentials itself. Okay. That every, every time that authentication is going to happen, it is going to be authenticated uh, with the credentials that are physically saved in the device's memory. Okay. Then. Firmware extraction, okay, resetting to an insecure state, state uh, removal of storage media, all of these things are like your attack surfaces, okay, malicious updates, and your confidentiality, integrity, and availability issues, okay, unencrypted local data storage, that's another issue, okay, insecure API use is another issue. And not only this, your cloud computing threats and your mobile application threat also surrounds the IoT. Okay. Then comes uh, what kind of methods can be used to <coughs> perform attacks against the IoT devices. Mm -hmm. So first is your DOS and DDoS types of attacks. Okay. So in this, you can simply make the <coughs> target IoT device non-functional by sending huge number of requests okay by flooding the device with the request so as to the intended use uh, the user the intended user is not able to utilize the functionality of that application okay then comes your rolling code attack mm -hmm. so what is your rolling code attack so let me Go back to my paint. So, what happens in rolling tag is let's say, uh, let's say this is your car. <coughs> so There's a 
person out there okay he has got a remote in his hand and there's an attacker out there okay, in the nearby community what happens in here in, is that this attacker is going to have some kind of a uh, let's say rf crack okay this utility out there called rf crack let me see if i can show it to you software defined radio attack uh -huh. Not only this, there's uh, a hardware based utility also out there. So these both of these things uh, work in consonance with each other. So what what is going to happen is this per this person is going to press this key on his remote to let's say um, uh, lock or unlock the car. Okay, mm -hmm. which is going to be sent to the car. Okay, what attacker is going to do is attacker is going to <coughs> so if your uh, unlocking signals are being sent what attacker is going to do is attacker is going to copy the signal and save it, uh, save it locally to himself okay. these signals are going to be saved okay. and he is going to wait this uh, this person to leave okay once he is gone what he can do is he can try replaying these signals to the car okay and he would be able to unlock the car without the physical access to the remote itself hmm. getting my point yeah so these kind of things uh, actually happens out there with the but uh, you need specific hardware to intercept the this radio frequency okay and to replay those radio frequencies okay that's why we say we have to stick with our old uh, traditions yeah <laughs> we have to use manual car key <laughs> Right. So you should always stick with the older traditions. Yeah. See, that's the that's the uh, the best part of using a notebook and a pen is that yeah. nobody can hack into it. Exactly. <laughs> so this was <coughs> something about your rolling code attack, and mm -hmm. I have given the same example here as well okay. then there are your bluetooth based vulnerabilities okay so there's a series of attacks uh, the genre is called as blue born attacks okay they, uh -huh. these attacks are dedicated uh, to your bluetooth devices uh -huh. only uh -huh. yeah okay so <clears throat> then comes your back doors okay so but back door can be implemented or deployed to the iot device okay which can be later on utilized to gain access to the iot device at as per the attackers will okay so That's all for today, Yusuf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then, okay, I mentioned the news URL here as well. The lawsuit. Lawsuit. Ring suit by a man who claims camera was hacked and used to harass his kids. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the 
allows citizen should have implement factor authentication requiring users to verify their identities using a second form of identification blah 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 whole lot of things these third world nations have got different kind of problems yeah so you can definitely go through these uh, news articles mm -hmm. <laughs> these are your <coughs> general cyber security news updates that would be mm -hmm. good for you to know okay. so yeah. that's all for your iot module you said okay now i'll be sharing the notes with you yeah also uh like uh, just now i just remember because in this notes some places uh, because in some of the earlier notes also yeah. some places there are references for the image but uh, yeah. because note is only send like notepad you know so the image yeah, is yeah, not yeah. like sort of like yeah, same right. like there, and there are a lot of other uh, notes like i have seen you have mentioned image reference with the number or this thing but uh, yeah. so <laughs> right so uh, so just how i showed you these images yeah. so similarly yeah. i would have mentioned these references in my notes Correct. as well yeah. Yeah. yeah so if you want i can create a zip file for all these images so you yeah can see here that for all the modules you can just create so at least when when i'm going through this notes i can open that folder and see which image it is you know Right, right. Uh, so you no need to send uh, like one by one. You can just zip it and send it all. No problem. Right. Uh, uh, module wise, it is okay. I can manage to sort it out. That's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'll uh, create a zip file and I'll share yeah. the images. With yeah. You. No problem. Yeah. No problem. You can send this file. I'll just save it also. <laughs> so now which is 